Hi everybody, it's Mr. Alkamusi. Today I'm going to be introducing our new novel for this unit called The Pigman by Paul Zindel. So there are a few things we need to know about The Pigman before we get started. For example, some facts about the novel itself in the background. This novel is a bit old, it was published in 1968, yet is considered one of the best-selling teen novels of all time. It's been read ever since then and is still read in schools today. There are three main characters we really need to know about. The first two are a boy and a girl. They are young high schoolers in 10th grade. The boy's name is John, and the girl's name is Lorraine. And these two become friends with an old man named Angelo Pignati, and they nickname him the Pigman. So it's these two high school students who are best friends with this old man. Now how the book is organized is in chapters, but the chapters are told by both characters, John and Lorraine. John narrates the odd chapters, and Lorraine narrates the even chapters. So when you're reading an odd-numbered chapter, such as chapter 1 or chapter 3, John is the speaker. And when you're reading an even-numbered chapter, such as 2 or 4, Lorraine is the speaker. Whenever we begin reading a novel, there are some questions we need to frame our novel with so that we can better understand the story. When reading this novel, these are the two questions we want to think about. For starters, this novel is about friendship. And what we want to look at is when does friendship become a parasitical relationship? Parasitical comes from the root word parasite, and it means someone who is benefiting from a relationship by harming someone else. And this is those kind of friendships where some people use others in the name of friendship, but in reality they're not really their friends, they're using them. So we want to look at when does friendship shift from being a mutual relationship where both are benefiting to where it becomes a parasitical relationship where only one is benefiting over the other. The other question we want to look at is responsibility. When we do something bad, how responsible are we for the actions of others? And that's the question we need to think about when we approach this novel. Because in this novel, a couple of characters kind of get caught up in doing something pretty bad. And another one of the characters really suffers for it. And we want to ask, how responsible are they for harming each other? As to the first question, we need to realize that sometimes, even without realizing it, some people use their friends for personal gain. They may be friends, and they may not realize they're doing it, but sometimes there are people who will use their best friend to get something out of them. And this is something we need to be careful of in our own friendships. As to the second question, the answer is kind of complicated. It actually depends on the situation. And in this novel, it's going to be left to the reader to decide who is responsible for the terrible thing that happens in this story. So we need to pay really careful attention to the characters and their interactions to see if we can discuss the responsibility that people have to face from their own actions. There are also themes in a story, so this, the general topics or ideas that the book focuses on. Here is a list of a few of them. And these are important topics to think about when we read this novel because they are basically the message that the novel is trying to send the reader. As to the second one, the word angst means that feeling where someone is struggling. Believe it or not, being a teenager is not easy, and this novel shows that being a teenager does have its struggles. So, in this novel, let's think about what are the struggles that teenagers face. There are also some motifs. A motif is basically a pattern or something that completely uh, comes up frequently in a novel. For example, this novel focuses a lot on psychology, particularly on the early psychologist Sigmund Freud. If we're going to understand this novel, we need to know a little bit about psychology. And this novel does have a little bit of uh, relation with the theme of death that seems to come up very often in the story, and as we get through it, we'll talk more about it. Lastly, and perhaps the most important in our story, are the symbols. Symbols are usually placed in stories to give a deeper meaning to a character or an object. Meaning, usually a symbol is talking about something deeper than what it seems. When we are reading this novel, time and again I will remind you to focus on these five things as they come up in the story. Whenever you see them, it's very important to make note of them, because these five things are symbols. 
In other words, they have a deeper meaning than what seems to be there on the surface. This is an idea we will come back to over and over throughout the course of this novel. As you can see, there's a lot to talk about here, and I hope this is a novel you enjoy. Thank you for watching.